The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. And I'll tell you a story. Some of you may know this story about what does it mean? Women, just like yourselves, accomplishing something beyond what you could imagine that you could accomplish. In the five towns in Farakwa and Farakwa, there's a woman who lives there. Her name is Lori Martin. Does everybody know the story? Well, I'll tell you the story quickly. Lori Martin, Rahmona Litzlan, 10 years ago, had a daughter, Sarah Sarit, who had Nebuchadnezzar Machla. And the women in the five towns, they decided that they want to start an Amain group. Just like the Rebetzin Kanievsky, La Shalom Bacheva, she had an Amain group, and people came, everybody said the brachas out loud, everybody said Amain. So that's what they decided they're going to do as well, a schus for Sarit. Unfortunately, she was so far gone already, she passed away. But they decided to name the Amain group, and they continued it. It's called Oyel Sara for that girl. The Oyel Sara Amain group. And it's been going on for 10 years. 50, 60, 70 women come different days. Rosh Chodesh, the place is packed. Everybody says the brachas. Everybody says Amain. Then they go to different places in the room. To Davin, not Chas V'Shalom, it should be considered a woman's minion. Then they come back. And today they would sing Halal, as you did. And then somebody says it's Vatayra. So, three months ago, Lori's second daughter, Raquel Katz, was in Miami, and she was walking, and she fell. She just collapsed. She said to her husband, she doesn't feel well, she collapsed. And she was in such a coma, that she was such in a deep coma, that they wouldn't even move her once they got her to the hospital, to take an MRI or a CAT scan, because they felt that her life was hanging on a balance. And they realized right away that she's brain dead, and that she'll never talk. And they were just hoping that somehow the body could revive itself so that at least they could move her or take an MRI and see a CAT scan and see what's doing. After a month of not moving her, they were able to do certain tests and they saw that they, she was still in a coma, but they moved her up to Long Island Jewish Hospital here in New York. They came to New York. Again, she was there for another month. And one day, Mrs. Corinne Fuchs, one of the Tzidkaniyasin from Farakoy, called me up and said, would you take us, we want to go 40, 50 women to the cave of Rabbi Yaakov Yosef and we want to be Mispalel, Chai Rezel Bazdina. I said, I won't go on the yard site, there's too many people there, but if you want to go, either a few days before or afterwards, I'll take you to the quorum, which are across the street, Rabbi Rav Palm, his Rebetzin, Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky, Rav Hanach Leibowitz, Chavetz Chaim's wife, and then we'll go to Rabbi Yaakov Yosef. And they agreed. We came on a Thursday morning, it was very, very hot, and I said to each of the women, you must drink. Normally you're not allowed to eat in the base island, but I insist everybody have a bottle of water. You must drink because you could get dehydrated. That's how hot it is. And of course, we all walked up the hill. We went to the Cayenne first, Rav Palm, and I spoke about Rav Palm and his Rebetzin. And then we went to Rav Yaakov Kamenetsky. Then we came to Rav Hanach. And each place we said to him, not only for Chayrezel Bazdina, but also for, for themselves, everybody has needs. And by Rav Hanach Leibowitz, I said, we're going to say Kipitol Chav Gimel. Gam ki elech begeitz al moves, lo ira ro ki atoi madi. Even though that I walk in the valley of death, I will not be afraid because you are with me. And just as we finish that Kipitol Tillam, and I'm about to walk away, and I just said to the women, okay, you dive in here, finish, and then just follow where I'm walking to the Chavetz Chaim's second wife. All of a sudden, there's a scream. There's such a loud scream. Now, I'm telling you, no man can scream like a woman. And when women scream all together, no man can scream the way women scream. And women are screaming, and I don't know what happened. I'm so frightened. I thought for sure that somebody dehydrated and hit their head either on a monument or on the cement. And I'm wondering, should they call Atzala? All of a sudden, everybody's running there to where we we happened to be coming from. And somebody yells, she's on the phone. And I'm thinking, like, who's on the phone? Like, I said, get Atzala or something. I thought she was on the phone with Atzala. I said, who's on the phone? And Lori Martin, she said, it's my daughter. I said, what do you mean, your daughter? She said, she just came out of the coma. I said, what are you talking about? She said, my husband just called me. She came out of the coma. I said, I don't believe it. Let me talk to her. I said, Raquel, is that you? She says, yeah. I said, how are you feeling? She said, fine, Baruch Hashem. I am telling you, later that afternoon, Dr. Uberfeld called me. He said, Rabbi Kron, I want you to hear it from me, not from anybody else. I have been a doctor of pulmonologist for 21 years. There are no medical words or explanations to explain what happened today. This woman was brain dead. There is no way to explain it. But look at these. These women were yichad leiv. They were yichad leiv and she came out of the coma as we were by Rav Henach. And we went back to Rav Henach and we said, Kipitol Kuf, which is Mizmel Asayda. And then one of the women asked me, she said, Rabbi Kron, we don't want to leave here. We just saw a miracle. Explain it to us. How did this happen? How could such a thing happen? 
And I said to everyone, we should not chas v'shalom think it was because of us. We were the icing on the cake. But it's all the women in Klal Yisrael. It's all those people who davened for this girl. They were yichad leiv. They focused. I said, you know, and Hashem just opened up my brain and just dropped this in. It's unbelievable. I don't even know where I got it from. But, you know, sometimes you have to come up with an answer and Hashem just, just gives you the words. And I said, you know, there are three words in the Hebrew language that all begin with the same letters. Nun samach. Neis, which is a miracle. Neis, which is a flag that's on a high flagpole. And nisayoin, which is a, an, a, a test. So I said, why did Hashem test Avram Avinu? He, he loved him. So why do you have to test him? You know why? Because he knew he'd pass. And when you pass a test, you're on a higher Rama, you're on a higher Madrega. I said, all of you today, you're 40, 50 women, you all passed the test. You came here on the hottest day. You could have been dehydrated. You passed the test and you davened and you cried for this girl. That's not even your daughter. It's not even your granddaughter. Oh, David just saw you a yichad leif. David just saw you focused and you davened and you passed that test to come on a hot day. You put you on a high, like a high flag on top of the pole. And when you're on that high level, then you see the nace, then you see the miracle. And that's what Yichad Leib is all about. Anything is possible. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.